All right, I wanted to make a video to talk a little bit about how you could use Solver to do a more complicated problem, and also how you would set up a spreadsheet to work a real engineering type problem or an environmental modeling problem. So this is an example kind of a both of those where we're looking at flow rate between two reservoirs. This is a classic problem that you would see in a undergraduate fluids class, you know, very important one to solve. And basically we're trying to understand if you got a fluid flowing from one reservoir into another, like for example, this could be a water tower and this is a distribution point connected by a pipe. So like how much flow is there going to be between those two? And that flow is going to depend on the difference in elevation between the two. So that's going to create a potential energy difference that depends on gravity. <clears throat> so you've got this energy drop from the fluid as it moves from one to the other, uh, the gravity constant. It's going to depend on how, mu how much friction there is in the in the fluid, some fluids have more friction losses than others, and so that's going to go into this kinematic viscosity value. Um, it's going to depend on how big the pipe is. It's going to depend on how rough the pipe is, so the E represents that, and D, and then it's going to depend on how long it is. So there's really a lot of variables, and we'd like to be able to predict how uh, changing any of those variables is going to change the, the flow rate, and so give us our, our Q. And so the emphasis here on this problem is how you can use solver. Um, the way this, this would typically be done in a fluids class would be uh, using the Moody chart, which is an iterative approach that you, you can use with, uh, you have to look values up in this chart over and over again, and it's um, you know, something that's much better done on a computer, a lot less chance of making a mistake. So, so again, I've taken the liberty of putting together this kind of formatted spreadsheet here to work at, it provides some info on what it does, some, some formatting for the different parts of it, and I've started here by writing all these assumed values that we're going to work with in this problem, the height of the two reservoirs, the value of the gravity constant, the kinematic viscosity, the pipe diameter, which would probably be in centimeters, so I've got with the units here, so a unit column, value column, and a label column length, and then this E that represents the, the friction losses. So, you know, to work this problem, if you're if you haven't studied fluids, it would maybe be a little bit hard to follow. But just purely from a mathematical point of view, um, the way that we would solve this is <clears throat> using the uh, three equations. We, you, you could have more. Uh, there's terms in here like the, the velocity that you could calculate. Uh, I've eliminated that from the equations just for the purposes of simplicity here. So basically the friction losses are going to depend on the, can be calculated by the Darcy-Weisbach equation, which would typically be written in a slightly different form. If you put it in terms of the flow rate in a pipe, it looks like this. And it depends on this friction factor here. To get the friction factor, that, that takes into account the fluid characteristics, the pipe characteristics. Uh, we can get that with this Colebrook-White equation. We could also get it from the Moody chart or from some other equations. I'm going to work it here with this Colebrook-White formula. Uh, and so it de also depends on the Reynolds number here, and the Reynolds number depends on the flow rate. So if you look at this, really what we have is three unknowns. We have an unknown Q, an unknown Reynolds, and an unknown F, and we have three equations. So three equations and three unknowns. Uh, but this actually can be solved pretty easily in Solver, using Solver. And so I made another video on how to use Solver. You might want to watch that one before this if you're not familiar. And so basically to do Solver, what we need is we, we want a variable cell and then we want a closure condition in our uh, target cell. And so um, you can do that when a, with a problem like this with multiple equations and unknowns by just picking a value for one of them and then following the logic through back to the beginning and seeing if your guess was reasonable. So you could pick any of the three in this situation and solve it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick F. Typically we know F is going to be usually between 0.01 and maybe 0.005 and then maybe 0.05. So it's we can get kind of close and anytime you're doing a numerical method having a reasonable starting point is going to help. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick an, a value of F then I'm going to I have everything else in this equation to get Q then I can go in here and get the Reynolds number and then I can go in here and get the friction factor and uh, I can check to see if this if those values uh, work out to make this left hand side and right hand side equal. 
Uh, and if it doesn't, then I can go back to the beginning and I can adjust the value of F. So I'll set up an, a, a cell that represents the value of the friction factor, the assumed value, and then another one that checks whether that was right. And then I can use Solver to, to do that. So I'm going to start here with uh, calculating with my guess for F. And I'm going to guess 0.02, as I mentioned. Uh, I'm going to need the head loss here term here is just the difference in elevation between the two reservoirs but since I've set it up in the most general way as an unknown I'll need that first so HL uh, I'm going to use this right column again for the units and that's going to be equal to Z1 minus Z2 and then I'm going to be anal here a little bit and make sure that this looks nice I'm going to make that subscript you can see I also made these uh, Times New Roman to match the font here these are Arial up there. Uh, okay, so I've got the head loss, and so now I, at, with my guessed value for friction, I can get Q. So I have Q, and that's going to be in meters cubed per second. And I'll go ahead and make it superscript too. Okay, and so we'll have equals the square root. So you can do a square root in Excel with this function. And then uh, one you may not know is that you can grab the value of pi by typing pi and then two parentheses. That, that's a function that calls the value of pi, so that squared times g times the head loss that we just calculated times at d to the fifth. And so I need these units to work out, so I'm going to take that diameter divided by 100 to put it in meters to the fifth divided by 8 divided by the friction factor and divided by L. Uh, I could make these stationary if I wanted to like make you know, copy these over and do different calculations. You might want to have some references be stationary. Here, they're only going to be one cell, so there's no need to worry about the formulas copied uh, or anything like that. So, all right, so I think that'll work. And that gives me a first guess for flow rate, okay? Uh, and so now I can get the Reynolds number. And, you know, often you would calculate the velocity in between, but, but you don't really need to do that here. So equals 4 times Q divided by pi divided by nu and then divided by D. And so I have to remember to make this dimensionless. So I'm going to multiply, put 100 on the numerator to make that work out with the units. Okay, and so there's my Reynolds number and 10 to the 6th power. It's a big number. That's not uncommon for Reynolds number. Okay, and so now I'm going to have my Colebrook white equation. I'm going to have a left-hand side, and then I'm going to calculate the right-hand side. And so the left-hand side is 1 over the square root of the friction factor. And then the right-hand side is going to be equals negative 2 times the log base 10 of so we have E over D here, and so E and D need to be in the same units. So I'm going to have E, and I'm going to divide that one by 10 to put it in centimeters, then divide by 3.7, and then divided by D, and those should have the same units now, plus a 2.51 divided by the square root of the F I grabbed, and also divided by the Reynolds number. All right, let me do that and so you see that our left hand side and right hand side are not equal they should be equal I'll just call this cell the closure and so if those two were equal their difference should be zero and then not quite so we could sit here and change this to 0.03 to 0.01 something like that and over and over again try to figure it out but this is what solver is useful for so I'm going to just go ahead and uh, open up solver set my objective function so I want this one to be a value of zero by changing our guess for the friction factor and we'll just give that a shot and it found it and it looks like F comes out to be 0.0157 and that means that our flow rate which is what we really wanted is 0.433 so we might set up a last cell here where we say flow or maybe max flow rate and then that's equal to this guy and that one and then I might put it in bold as like a you know my answer here this is what we're trying to figure out maybe we put a colon okay and so this kind of shows how you can set up a spreadsheet here to 
solve a much more difficult problem the one we did before uh, one equation and one unknown. This is three equations and three unknowns. It's highly nonlinear. Again, I made, uh, you could rewrite this with velocity. You could use different formulas for friction factor. There's some different ways that you can solve it, but this is maybe the you know hardest version of it with, say, this Colebrook White formula. But it's no big deal in solver. And now we can go in and, and change any of these assumptions and just hit solver, solve again, and, and we get the updated answer. So it's very handy.